today is Tuesday, see, September 24th, 2024. And as you can see, I am on the road. I am actually going to record a quilt studio on tour. <laughs> so I have someone that lives in a portion of St. Louis area and I am on my way to go videotape her studio. So I will check with you all when we start the tour. Bye-bye. It's T and I'm back. I'm at Dottie's home and I'm going to show you her studio as well as some of her work. She is a, also a long armor. She creates some of her own original designs and she has a wonderful studio with great storage options. So we're going to turn this camera around and have Dottie introduce herself. Hi. Um, I've been quilting about maybe 15 years seriously. Before that, I kept trying to be a quilter, and I would piece, but I never got the quilts finished. Um, <laughs> and a couple of years ago, the one quilt, quilt, quilt guild I'm in did a UFO challenge, and I went back to work on some of those old UFOs, the things that were 20 and 30 years old. And boy, were they a hot mess. <laughs> it's amazing how you learn over the years. Right, but that shows our growth. And I have quilts like that, and I just don't fix them. I just go ahead and let them stay because it shows your growth in quilting. And that's exactly what I did. I just, let's get this finished so somebody can use it. Okay. So as we're at the entrance to Dottie's uh, studio, I'm going to, Dottie is new to this, not, never been on YouTube, so have grace. And we're going to just talk about what she has here. If she has anything she wants to point out about any particular thing, we'll allow her to do that. And then I'll ask questions whenever I think we need some clarity. All right. Some of these quilts are just from patterns. This one was a Modern Quilt Guild Challenge. And it was not long after I got my long arm, so it became an experiment in doing some custom quilting on it and just how far I can take it. Let me come in so I can see some of this quilting. Beautiful. So we'll just put that over the, the trunk. <laughs> and then this was a more recent one. This was a COVID project. I think everybody got into... Jen Kingwell and the Traveler's Wife. No, this one's Boho Hard. And, and Boho uh -huh. Hard. Yeah, the Traveler's Wife used to be called Gypsy's Gypsy. Wife. Yeah, yeah, and they had some somebody had a controversy with that, which was so weird because on H is it H is it TLC they used to have the Gypsy the Gypsy show oh, and yeah. they called themselves Gypsy, the so Traveler's it was so yeah. weird that yeah, some of the Boho, cultures were offended by Boho Heart actually grew out of the Traveler's Wife. Okay. Because um, I've done them both. Yeah. The, uh, if you get the book for Boho Heart, there's another woman's name on there. I think it's Jennifer Bear. And she did the Traveler's Wife and then decided she didn't want to put the blocks like everybody else did. Oh, okay. So she arranged them in a heart, and that's how we ended up with this. Awesome. When it went out there, everybody saw it. They kept going to Jen Kingwall for that pattern, and she said, it's not mine. And that Another was the one that you custom quilted. Now, did you freehand these, or was this machine? No, that's machine custom, custom quilting. Okay. Um, I'm talking about like free motion quilting, or did you use the no, Statler? It's, it, that's Statler. Okay, it's beautiful. I, I thought maybe you had done it by hand, I but do it's beautiful. very little of what I refer to as the F word. <laughs> uh, my very background beautiful. before I got my long arm was selling sewing machines, and I knew the computerized embroidery software and some of those programs, and a lot of that knowledge transferred. And I shouldn't say I don't do the F word. 
there's my free motion. <laughs> on the aisle. Yeah. Okay, and then the next section of your space. This is a quote that I here. just finished called The Circle of Life. And that was kind of a, it was a down the rabbit hole project. But I'm real tickled with how it turned out. And I've been here for maybe 40 minutes and I've talked to Dottie. I like to get people comfortable before we throw a camera in their face. And she was saying that she put in these friendship stars and represents various members of her family. Yeah. And she has 10 of these stars that she stopped the circle quilting for. She explained to me how she done it. I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> and we're not going to put it in here because it's like a learning thing. And well, it was a challenge. It's a challenge, right. And it's just amazing where her mind is when it comes to how long she's been quilting and what she's doing with quilting. It's amazing. But that's why the custom quilting can be expensive because mm -hmm. of the time involved in figuring it right. out. And I don't have to go upstairs. Um, it was when we bought the house four years ago. It was wonderful, and I knew this was going to make a tremendous studio. And is this door pantry if you needed a pantry? No, that's actually my HVAC system. Okay, just checking, because they'll ask me later. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's... Is this your mom? That's my mom. She's 92. Let her in too. She, she has dementia. She's <laughs> and in. this is tea quilt stuff here, so ignore <laughs> that because she's very organized. <laughs> and then here you're, you have this very large area we just can't ignore. Yeah, this I will take no credit for designing it. I saw it on Instagram and it took me a while to collect the components. Do this I know this. these are Ikea because I got two of those. It is 100% Ikea. Really? 100% Nice. Ikea. Um, I've got some smaller of these tables, not this high or this long. Yeah, these are three tables and the table that you want to get, the width is half of the length. Okay, so, so then I when you put two together, put two back to back, then you can put the one, one on the end. One on the end. Very nice. And Very creative. The Alex drawers fit beautifully underneath. Mm -hmm. The legs are height adjustable. Okay. I'm short. I'm 5'2", so I have them adjusted for my height. I have additional storage under oh, here. Oh, wow. And I even see you got a Foth bag. I just bought a Foth used. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it holds all kinds of nice Oh, that's another stuff. extra table. That's a uh, table for a Sigma 301. Okay. And then the big, big rulers. I have room for them. So um, on both sides of the shorts. And then she has a bigger cutting board. And then that goes to. Ernie. Oh, it's, she's got two put together. Uh huh. They're just very nice. And then the she back. puts her big board just flat on top because she's got the room for it. Don't need the ironing board. Mm -hmm. And then. And then oh, your batting here. Batting here. That's nice. Did you make this or purchase the batting holder? It is, and this is exactly oh, so. what I saw on IKEA. They're the IKEA trestle tables. Oh wow. It is electrical conduit from the hardware store. Okay. And two U-shaped okay, brackets it. that hold it mounted to the bottom. And all I have to do is pull the batting up and over the top. And so which, uh, you told me earlier that you only have one batting this that you purchased. Hobbs, so Hobbs. Well, I actually have two here right now. I, this is Hobbs 8020. Okay. And then on my um, long arm table, I've got um, Quilter Stream Wool. Okay. That's that that I use for my husband and myself. Okay, just making sure, cause, um, and that makes it easier for you to store batting because you you only need so much of the other if it's just for you. Yeah. And then your customers, she quilts for other people that we're not taking new cu uh, customers. We talked about <laughs> that. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. But and yeah. I just when we moved in, I wanted stuff down here to cover the nasty cream colored walls that I don't like and <laughs> have the things around me during the day that make me feel Good. So she's talking about hanging like a lot of her works, but we're going to start here in this corner just to let you know she also has a full bath down here. Her quilt storage area for her customers quilts is actually a 
fifth bedroom. It's a fifth legal fifth bedroom. So we'll show you that later, but I just wanted you to know why the bath is down here as well, <laughs> why why it's a full bath. But also has a single treader yeah, that was in here. And then her serger sits on top. And then I'll just show you some of these quilts. Yeah. That's a Victoria Finley Wolf pattern. And that is this is just a panel. That is all about the quilting on that, and unfortunately, it really doesn't show up. I can see some of the yeah quilting here. I do a program. It's now bi-monthly called Skill Builders, and I get digital designs by Gamble or by yourself. No, it's through a company called Methodist Hill Quilts. Okay. And it's geared to people that use the Statler. They do have light versions for people that don't have a Statler. Okay. But I get the designs. I get a printed pattern, to, a PDF of a pattern to do the um, piecing, if there's any piecing. Okay. And then it's anywhere from an hour to two hours of video on how to do the techniques and put it together in the software. Okay. That's and an then, original quilt. Then here is her magazines and books here. On mm -hmm. the bottom bookcases, and then you got two Madeira things thread here. Chest. Do you have thread in them, or is it something There's else? There's actually embroidery thread in there that okay. I never use. I'm just asking. I don't have time because they're so pretty. Even when I use the product, I wouldn't get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then what I noticed, um, she was on facebook just sharing some pictures of some of the things that she has in her sewing room and that's one of the reasons i wanted to come because i wanted to show that sometimes everything in our sewing room doesn't have to be sewing related so we'll also get to some of that as well yeah. and th the quilting books are over here oh quilting books are over the there um i missed that whole counter yeah see these are quilting <laughs> magazines and then various History books, as weird as that sounds. Historical cookbooks, going back to Martha Washington. I have a few. Um, I couldn't throw them away because I'm like, they don't produce this anymore. No. And then there's a lot of books that are historic costume. Okay. Um, and Beautiful. a little chunk on the end of old yearbooks. Okay. Because <laughs> everybody cool. has those. And everybody has seen the Dream Big panels, and yeah. she's got one of the the first ones you know the 40 they were 40 something inches long square yeah. when they first came out and now they're making them where they fit a whole bit and if you look in the upper left corner there's a feather pinned to it <laughs> i am a down free household because of allergies and one day i came down here and sitting on my chair it was a bad day was a feather mm. and i took that as a sign from my sister who's up above you so didn't the quilt the petals. You quilted a design over the entire thing. You were different. This is, and I'd have to look up whose it is. I apologize. Um, it's three rows. It was okay. a different approach to doing it. Uh -huh. Three rows, and you quilt the first row, and then you go up above. And, quilt and I know you're surprised row. I know this, but I'm one of those quilters, yeah. and I, t I teach this too. If you make something and what is expected people are just going to glance over it and then they're done with it but when you do something completely different with something yeah. it makes people go and stop and say whoa yeah that's not over that and i just noticed that as i'm sitting here talking about it, it wasn't like i had this plan to tell you all that it was that way yeah so but um, up on her top shelf she has storage as well all kinds of little trinkets and treasures yeah. So it doesn't, you can incorporate some other things into your sewing area and still have it be pretty. And that's what I liked about the pictures. She showed just a couple of pictures because she wasn't really showing her studio online. I was like, I bet you she's got more. <laughs> <laughs> and she does. <laughs> and she does. We all do. And then and you, not everything is pretty. These, these weird looking things when I have a big quilt that wants to slide off the table. They you just use it as a weight. Mm -hmm. yep. Very nice. I cannot. And it's been, I mean, that's such an antique. These were my great grandmas. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine ironing with them. Right. But they do get used, as, but, but not they're for nice. the intended. Purpose. And then you have AccuQuilt, not AccuQuilt, Sizzix die cut. Sizzix because I can use both Sizzix dies mm -hmm. and AccuQuilt. Yes, dies. you can. And you can do, not on the go, but I use the AccuQuilt 
studio and then I can cut anything on that with the adapters. Yeah. Up here she won't toot her own horn <laughs> but she has a few ribbons. just a few of her ribbons okay I'm sure she's got something well you might have more. I don't show. Uh -huh. I generally don't she don't show. show. And see she's kind of like me I used to show originally and I just stopped. <laughs> well I, so, but of it beautiful. Is just time between working and I have a mom that's my sole responsibility. Mm hmm. And a lot of my viewers are going through that now, taking care of uh, elderly yeah. parents. And some of these I've made, some of these were gifts. Modern Quilt Guild, in conjunction with Quilt Con, does a block, uh, mini quilt swap. So, Very some of nice. them are copies of what I made for other people, some of them were given to me. Um, the black quilt was actually a classic quilt con. Oh, wow. It was, the, there are templates for it, and I've never had templates that actually And of course, I love the dye. big churn dash. Beautiful. So. And then on this wall, she also has a piece of exercise equipment, <laughs> <laughs> just in case, you know. Just collector. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> <laughs> and then more quilts here and then you have your sewing area do you want to talk about your machines your yeah. cut your sewing table anything um, like that I'm gonna uh, I'll, the table was actually a gift Wow um, and the, the other end opens up too mm -hmm, right here it was from a friend of my father-in-law's who lost his wife oh my um, gosh and her name was Dorothy and when he went it's to downsize, beautiful too his daughters didn't want it, so he said... Got this wood here. Yeah. And then so, it's also trammed in that. On yeah. The, you know, it's for a the, beautiful table. It's a beautiful, yeah. And, and then got a pull so, out yeah. there. So, and yeah. then over here is this Ikea. That's Ikea. And then the, another one of the Alex Alex's. things in a different size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then your machines, because they're going to want to know well, about I've got that. Two Berninas, um, my 475, which is my favorite. Over here. And then a 770. Over there is the 770. I am a, primarily a piecer, so a straight stitcher. Mm -hmm. And the 475, I don't quilt on my domestic, so I don't need the throat space. I like the 5 millimeter width machines to piece on. Okay. I feel like I like the stitch quality. I don't fight other issues. So okay. I piece on a and see, and I guess machine. I didn't realize that they had that these were five millimeter and not nine because I figured once they went to nine on the seven seventy that they were gonna make all machines nine, but they didn't. Okay. It's the stitch width when you go up the product line and you can stair step all the way up to a small fortune. Um, the top of the line is where you get the nine millimeters. Okay. And if you go into towards the bottom of the line, you get the five millimeter. Okay. I piece with a straight stitch plate on my machine. Yeah, and I do that too. Um, and I, mean, I do I have. Can zoom in. I do have a straight stitch plate for the seven seventy mm -hmm. also, um, and I do like it's, the feet for the quarter inch and the quarter inch with a guide. Okay. So I use those quite frequently. What number is that? That's, That's a, a 57. 57. Okay. Because I don't think I have it with the guide. Yeah, the 57 is the one with the guide and then there's the 37. Okay, because I have that one. Yeah. And I have the 97. Do you know what brand these lights are? Because uh -huh. these are light bars. They're Slimline by Daylight. Okay. And one was gifted to me with the, the cabinet, and the other one I had purchased. And yes, that is light overkill, and I love it. Right, that's why I would. I mean, it's so weird that we're bringing up these different conversations because I had these conversations with my YouTubers within the past week or so. We were talking about me years ago reading a study where they say just. The average Amer human, not American, just average humans require more light as we age. And I said, quilters have been requiring lights because we quilt. I said, I can't imagine as we're aging how much light we're going to require. I'll, I'll it's so up weird. Some pictures <laughs> later. When we moved in, I've got can lights. There's dozen plus down here. Mm -hmm. They had incandescent floodlights. And they got hot on the top of my head. Mm -hmm. They generated a lot right. of heat for the space. Mm -hmm. And it was a yellow light. Mm -hmm. and just wasn't pretty at all. <laughs> it was during COVID. <laughs> I'm trying not to just have you on the whole time. So. Well, it was during COVID. And 
I wanted LED lights and we struggled but we did find some um, so we did a lot of tweaking with just the light bulbs hmm. and the lights now are a daylight flood light they're the equivalent of a hundred watt they're a white light and they were still recessed up in the can, mm -hmm. which created shadows. Mm -hmm. And I told my husband, I said, you need they the need longer. a booster chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he found them. Oh, wow. So I, I can get, mm, that's cool. get you pictures is there, of those. Is there a machine in here? Older machine? Yeah, that's a Singer 301. Okay, Singer 301. Because they they notice everything, yeah. and they'll be asking me. And I'm, I'm like, I don't know. The other thing is, you switch to Laura Star. As your ironing system, how does that, what do you think about that whole system? I like it. This is, that was four years ago, early COVID. Mm -hmm. um, the prices have gone up dramatically. Mm -hmm. I love it. And what I love about it is that I've got it on my Ikea cart. And yes, I know Lars Star makes a cart, but I'm cheap. Mm -hmm. It rolls over here. Oh, wow. So you can go to your long arm when you need to press some or shrink some borders. Or steam. <laughs> Because if you've ever used Laura Star, the steam on this is great. Mm -hmm. When I have wide backs that have not been, they've been laundered but not pressed before they sent them to me, I just wheel that over there, turn it So on, that's cool. And I just clamp one end on. And it's less bulky because you already got an ironing surface, so why did you need the ironing set up? And then you can move this, whereas that's not as movable. I think it's yeah. fantastic. See, this is why I'm here. Yeah. So <laughs> I love how other people funny. handle... Uh, yeah. issues and they large star is selling you an ironing system they're not they're um, not a long armor no but they do now have a cart that you can set it on mm -hmm. um, it's great but I already had an extra IKEA very cart. nice and I have weird little things because I'm short every <laughs> once in a while if um, I've got a 30 inch head on my long arm and if I want to really make sure I get precise into the back. I, I, I can, you know, give myself some added height so I can see what I want. So there is a Very reason nice. those are under there. And then Fabrics. this table here. This is, again, Ikea. Mm -hmm. Oh, All my well, look at that. This is Omni. And oh my god, I'm I'm glad I asked. <laughs> Y'all look how she uses straws. These are the bendy straws. Mm -hmm. I cut the ends off of them. And then she can put the bobbins right on top of yeah, the straws. Yeah, I hate pulling thread off. Awesome. Bobbins. And I don't take mine off. I just have a hundred of them or so. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Glide. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom is kind of an assortment of odds and ends. And Very nice. I'm glad I asked that. See, we learned something. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then she even has a, um, a board that she can write on. Things yeah. pop in her head. She done already went over there and wrote, wrote a wren yeah. on there for a die. So. Yeah. And the, I've got to talk about the stool because it's keeping things around me that remind me of people that I may not have in my life anymore. Mm -hmm. This was an adopted Big Brother made it. Oh, wow. Um, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I met him through Living History. and It looks like it's contoured almost. Oh, it is. He hand-carved the seat yeah. out of my Yeah. Yeah. And it's... it's that is cool. It, it's lower in the front than the back. Mm -hmm. When we did Living History, I used to demonstrate hand spinning. So that's my spinning stool. Very nice. So, All right. And the big beast in the room is the Gamel long arm, 30-inch head, she says. It's a Statler. With a Statler. That and then was upgraded for the Ascend. Okay, for the Ascend. And then she also has a monitor that she can look at that instead of the small monitor down here. You can see this anywhere in the room. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have to worry about angling this a particular way to see. She just sets up her quilts down there, and then she can come over here and look here. And you can even look here as you're setting up if you want to. Mm -hmm. But very nice. Beautiful. Very thoughtful and efficient on how you're working. I tried. Mm -hmm. I tried. All right. More quilts in the background. I've got my bobbin winding station and then the IKEA equivalent of pegboard. Oh, okay. I see it now. Her bobbin Bobbins winders in here. And oil and brushes and extra bobbin cases and 
These are the threads that I'm getting ready to do a custom later. So those are the threads I've picked out to That's use. That's a good way to use your lead, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And then these are your parts, all of your parts, yeah. extra parts for your gamel. You always keep certain extra parts because if you're oh. quilting in the middle of the night and um, uh, encoder or something like that breaks, you've got one to put in there and keep going, and you always keep extra. And these little guys, I found them during COVID. They get the weirdest little places mm -hmm. in your I have those cases. by my sewing machine, but I need to bring them over to my yeah. gam, bring some over to my gam. And then the technical tool here mm -hmm. to clean underneath the springs. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then you've got another quilt hanging here that's also, you, you custom quilt most of your quilts. It's, it's not like a, because it's diagonal lines, I know you probably don't consider this true custom, but it's custom. It was custom. It's custom. Um, I can it, see it. it. Sometimes I like to experiment on mine, and it's how far can you go. Right. Um, you know, if you quilt on a domestic, that's fine. But I don't... And think. even... But this is something that they could do on a domestic, because it definitely is. it's just diagonal lines... But it's different harder ways. to do it on a long arm than it is to do it on, on a domestic. domestic. Right, and then these spots, because they're so tiny, they're still manageable on uh, a domestic. domestic. So, but that was actually loaded on a 45 degree. And I angle. noticed too, you're using you use red snappers to load. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. use them because I've had three carpal tunnel mm -hmm. surgeries and don't have the greatest hand strength. And mm -hmm. then I finally saw the trick to getting them to go on easier is to bend them backwards and uh -huh. it opens it's the stretching. channel mm -hmm. and it makes them easier to use mm -hmm. so now I use my red snappers yeah and then you have some fabric here mm -hmm. let me go back on this side I don't know this how much we can see odds and end remnants so she has some of her fabric stored here got clothes bins on the bottom those are all scraps you're welcome to open them <laughs> okay I'll just pick the blues so wow. Nice now, I believe she has more scraps than she has fabric almost. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Is this another yes. IKEA thing here? Yeah, those are IKEA. Oh my god, this is beautiful. Um yeah. It it worked. I mean, the it's, space as far as the build out was done when we bought the house, but it's amazing how well it worked. If you come over here, hold on just one second. I'm looking at all the pretty all the my deco dad's marbles right here. This is the picture I saw. Yeah, my dad's um, marbles that pulled me in. I'm go. There's got to be something about the marbles. Yeah, they were my dad's. <laughs> but yeah, just beautiful. I just dad's. want you to see how she decorates. It's not. It's her studio, but she didn't just stop there. She has all of these wonderful memories that's also living in her studio. My first studio out the window from across from my long arm, there was a small stormwater retention pond that had a couple of swans. So I would watch the swans all day. I saw this in a quilt shop <laughs> in Iowa and it makes noise. Okay, and she's see. got it here. Isn't that something? <laughs> That is too cool, and I'm thinking that's just a one of a kind. Um, a big box fabric store that starts with a J. Okay. And they probably they may still have them. Um, that is too cool. I picked it up a couple of months ago. But it's so beautiful in here. You just come down here and just sit. You don't even have to sew. And this decrepit looking thing. That was the last thing my dad gave me before he passed away okay and music books because he was a music teacher mm. and the band sign that was from so this dad. is more your dad's area so let me yeah. step back i know you were saying you were going to show yeah. me something when i originally moved in the long arm was over there i added the hydraulics the light bar hit the and got head. ceiling power too so it's not hanging down yeah. that's cool the plug was back here. Mm -hmm. I've been known to trip because I'm not very graceful. So my husband one day when I was away on a trip, he I came home and he had wired. Very I, nice. I up there. Very and nice. It's a dedicated 20 amp circuit and the only thing on it is my long arm. Okay. And then this is the cord that attaches to the TV. Okay. So I have no cords back here. 
Okay. And then you've got... I've got a small throw small rug down throw there. Uh-huh, to cover that part when it goes down for the, the television. Th well, the, well, that's for the machine. That's for the light bar. Oh, that's for the light bar. Yeah. Okay, so what's so, your machine plugged into? Right here. The, oh, it's that long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I have mine, I have my surge protector mounted in the middle so it goes both ways because they only sold them so long. Yeah. When I got mine. I've got an extension so, cord from that. That's mm -hmm. my surge protector. Yeah. Um, and you got it all um, tied up so it doesn't move, which they probably can't see because of the lighting here. Yeah. But yeah, she's but got it zip tied. The part is, is low so I can reach it. Mm -hmm. um, my husband kept trying to put it up here. I'm like, no, I'm short. Okay. So, Very nice. And then and this, this cart. Oh, now this is a different cart. <laughs> <laughs> when you do oh when you do so that's custom, why it's on wheels it's on wheels i'm sorry i'm i'm, I'm not uh -uh. trying to run this tia over very but nice it comes over here and then i have this is what she wanted keyboard. to show us hold on let me back up and let me get the other part of it <laughs> My so, mouse. for you long armor, she's going the extra mile <laughs> to show you how to set this up so it's efficient and you're not chasing around your your long arm frame, especially yeah. those that have only one way in and out, like me. Well, and I know a lot of people, I know the girlfriend that got me using an extra wireless keyboard and mouse, she sets it on her quilt um, and she's working on it and that didn't work for me. So... Yeah, and very you nice. Tell I like a certain store, but and then I've got more storage down here. Okay. My extra canvas leaders. That okay, I that we use. never use because yes. once I put a quilt on, it's like you're gonna get done. <laughs> and what every sewing room needs band aids and the mm -hmm. so, yeah. And she's got Clorox wipes, freezer paper, wax paper, her starch and water spray. Cause sometimes it, you, if you're not a long warmer, we have to shrink some borders sometimes when you're quilting for other people. Um, if you're a gamma person, this is what gamma recommends to clean your tracks. Okay. Is the I've just been doing mine dry, but that's good. I'll start using ble Clorox bleach free, free. Clorox mm -hmm. wipes. And I cleaned the tracks today already, so I'm not, probably not going to get that much. But it gets a lot of any oil mm -hmm. off of the tracks, mm -hmm. and just very a nice. Way so to she clean. still got some, and she already cleaned them. Yeah. So it's You're just a never-ending cycle, especially when you are computerized quilting. You've got to make sure that your tracks and your encoders are clean all the time because that will oh, affect yeah. the stitch out. And stray threads that want to get caught up on the encoder pulleys and the things mm -hmm. like that. Um, I just had to take, um, I use a different system. I do not have Statler, but I uh, took my box off so that I could clean the wheels that were on the box, uh -huh. the control box. Okay. Because I did not even know I've had it since 20... 20 I got it January of 2020 okay, right. and I took the wheels off and behind the wheels is where the thread was hiding behind the bolts yeah when I got and so it was four years old it had mm -hmm. a floor model in a shop and I think within the first two weeks the wheels that were on the carriage and on the machine mm -hmm. I got tweezers and I spent a couple of hours unwrapping thread mm -hmm. Filled a sandwich bag. Mm -hmm. And then. Because uh, once it catch on, it just keep going until it won't roll. Yeah. And then you wondering why something isn't stitching right or you feel like it's jumpy or you feel like your point isn't yeah. a point. Most times you've got a thread lodged somewhere and you just yeah. can't see it. And so oh, I yeah. start taking stuff apart. Well, in this machine, I did a lot of work. Um, like I said, it had been a floor model. So. Mm -hmm. it was just for for renters in a quilt shop. But what is this? This is the Gamma Classic Plus? This is a 30 inch, um, yeah, it would be the. Because it's no, pretty. Optimum. Optimum, okay. I couldn't remember which one. And then yeah. this one is a special where it's got the teal. Yeah, it's, it's painted. Um, Paint. I wish I had color on mine, but I couldn't wait. I wanted mine when you I know, ordered it. And so now the gentleman that painted them retired, and I don't think they found anybody to take it over. I could be wrong. Um, it's a whole lot of 
it's some companies like the featherweight shop they're painting the featherweight so you can probably send them any machine but you need but you know when you're talking shipping but I feel because they're doing exactly what a car dealership does when they're painting cars they take them down to the bare metal but you got to have somebody that's going to put all this stuff back that's together better. and that ain't me I don't have <laughs> I don't have the patience nor the time for that yeah I've got a featherweight <laughs> centennial machine upstairs that was in poor condition but mm -hmm. it had the centennial badge and I keep toying around with having it painted but I'm not really a featherweight person so. okay so it's amazing to me that this big card has a lot of your stuff on it but you were able to have a place to store it still when yeah. you didn't want it out but this is probably where it stays when you don't have anybody here because this is when I do custom okay um, I'm trying to get away from custom age back mm -hmm. time yes time yes time. and we were talking about cost of long arming and you know custom it takes you can be working on a custom quilt for up to a week on some um there was one i did two weeks on. see and people don't realize even if you say and this is cheap made two hundred dollars a day and you working on somebody's quilt for say ten days that's two thousand dollars and nobody wants to pay you that to quilt a quilt but that's what it takes and people don't understand that and like and it, it is back breaking because you're constant once you set up your panto you kind of let it go when you're doing custom, you're constantly monitoring the machine, yeah. setting all the points. Yeah. So. And now, you're moving that head. And people think because it's custom, it doesn't make a difference. It does. It does make a difference. Yeah. And even when I'm doing edge to edge, I never leave the room. I'm always down here. Mm -hmm. Um so, that's yeah. just me having worked in machine shops yeah some people think because we got computerized it's like this software this Statler software it's not something that's easy to learn and remember all of these things because you can get taught in a class then you got to come home and execute what you've been taught and then there's going to be a time or two what you were taught wasn't enough for what you want to do which I've learned watching someone looking at some of her quilts because I'm one of those people that I noticed the, the, the stuff that's different and uh, I've been asking her questions while we just been chatting and I noticed those type of things and I know it takes some extra skills to do that type well, of stuff. I'll point out on the quilt behind you and I'll show you the quilt being remade. Um, I did this for a guild challenge a year ago. Mm -hmm. It won first place in the Guild Challenge. It's a modern. Quilt. What was the challenge? It was to do a riff on a log cabin. Okay. So it's a riff on a log cabin. Very nice. When you're a long armor, I knew I wanted to use that panto. So the piecing was somewhat designed around the edge to edge quilting. That's not custom quilting. Mm hmm. But. So you can see it behind here. I did it in a little bit of a hurry. Nothing like waiting until the week before it's due to piece it <laughs> because what I wanted to do wasn't working with my brain. And after I got it done, I was disappointed in the quilt. And there's four things. First of all, I had this section pieced and I wanted to make it bigger. I wanted it off center. Mm -hmm. So I went back to buy more fabric. These are different dye lots. Oh, wow. I hate that. So if you look close, yeah. you can see it. So that's, that's problem number one. Problem number two is down here when I rolled, I was in a hurry and I didn't register as much as I should have. So you can see this little chat channel gets a little see bit narrower. See how we, pu we pull our work apart. Nobody else so will even notice it. <laughs> problem number three, there's four. Problem number three, I was piecing the back. And I'm fine with piece backs, and I have Hobbs 8020 in there, mm -hmm. and I'll show you the back. Gorgeous. It's the black and white mm -hmm. that goes along with it. This is left over from the front. Mm -hmm. Let's use our scraps up. But if you look at the front, you can see the, the black shadow shows of the through. black. So mm -hmm. that was that was another thing I had a problem with. But I I wouldn't have noticed that had she not pulled, yeah. picked that out, pointed that out. And then the fourth problem I have, and this is nitpicky is here's the point of the piecing, okay. here's the point of the design. Okay. Here's the point of the piecing, okay. here's the point of the design. 
if you look the very center right here, mm -hmm. here's the center of the design. So if I had centered that right on this, my points would come off on both sides. And it would just... You wasn't be, even thinking about that part when you I were really working. Mm -hmm. So... And I, then this is in the quilting that's coming in later after you've pieced. Yeah. And like so. I said, I was quilting it in a hurry. Mm -hmm. um, and then this fabric was from 2016. I could not... I looked profusely. Could not find it. So I found another polka dot. And the discussion with my guild is... Is it as effective as the first one? <laughs> or you want me to come in here no, now? Or are you coming out here? Because we're going to be going there later. I will add one more piece of white to this. I'll put it up over here. I'll show you. Oh, so <laughs> you've already got it uh -huh. started. Okay. But see, it's so a So moving polka it dot. up. Oh, it's a different polka it's dot. a different polka dot. Let me see. So you all can decide, do you like the big polka dot or the small? <laughs> I like them both, though, because it's I still, actually, the big polka dot is still enough that you can still see a lot of the polka dots, too. I think the big polka dot from a distance is going to be more effective. Mm-hmm. You see a little yeah, bit more Yeah, you still see it. more of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got to add another piece. I oversized the white this time. So that you can I cut just, where you need to. That's it. Mm -hmm. Quilters after the alive. fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've still got to add a small strip on both sides, and then I'll very get it nice. Quilted. I can't believe you made the same quilt twice. But I tell people this: I can make a quilt, and if I don't like something, I'm okay with it. If I give it away, I don't have to look at it. And now that you want something, you know you want to keep it and use it, and you can't look at it. Because yeah. you know what the issues I know are. What all the issues are. Mm -hmm. yeah, I tell people then, that all the time. And then her quilts hanging on the wall. She's got these are it's just curtain, curtain rods. rods. And those are the little clippies. This so very nice. Yeah, this one does have a so like shower bottom. curtain hooks yeah. with the curtain rod. And so very nice. The star. Oh, that one has a hanging sleeve. Okay. And this one has a hanging sleeve. Oh, the boho heart one has a hanging and sleeve. And this does have a hanging sleeve. But yeah, but I, you had it up was, there already. Well, how often do you switch your quilts out? Do you? Bracket. Yeah, I do. Okay. Whenever the spirit moves. Okay, because that's gonna. Um, we got lots of quilts. Do you lecture as well? Teach? I do. I have done some programs for guilds. Mm -hmm. Um. Right now, because of personal commitments and mm -hmm. a mom with dementia, mm -hmm. it's very few and far between. Okay, then that's good. I was just wondering because yeah. you got a lot of knowledge. Yeah, I've and taught then... this class. This is an original design. I've taught that. And then I've done lecture programs on perfecting your piecing for guilds. Um, okay. I just did one a couple of months ago for a guild I belong to on batting. Okay. Um, then because there's a the, lot more to batting than people realize. She who sews is pretty cool yeah, too. Yeah, customer brought me this panel and I quilted it with the exact same pantograph and I liked it so much and I like Janet Wecker Fresh. What so, is this? I've seen this before. This, this is, is that featherweight shop? It's an apron from the featherweight okay, shop. Okay, I thought so. And if I'm going to wear an apron yeah. down here... Yeah, sometimes I put one on, sometimes I don't, but it helps to hold stuff. I don't like things that pull on my neck or my back. So this is the one, if I'm going to wear one, that I will wear. And it it pulls, it pulls doesn't pull on your neck. It crisscrosses it in criss the back. It crisscrosses in the back. Okay, very nice. And it's adjustable, too. And it's, yeah, and I got pockets then. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if I'm going to wear an apron down. Very nice. That's the one I'll wear. All right, guys, so now she, I remember I told you she's a long armor, so we're going into her next section here. And this is a mess because this is everything and I wanted to this hide is, from Tia. <laughs> now, I told her this is nowhere near a mess, yes. but I wanted you all to see because she has some more great ideas. And I'm going to just come in here and step yes. back so she can stay on one side. I, I want to show you these... Uh, storage baskets that she uses to store her customers quilt and i have the top 
IKEA baskets. I never thought about stacking them too high like this, and I think I may go home and do that. Yeah, it because I have wonderful. three of those small ones. I need to go buy these big ones and the clips that then, hold them together. Then when you've got them together, there's four in the small, there's six in the large. Mm -hmm. So I know I've got 10 quilts in each section. Mm -hmm. So visually I can t keep track of how many quilts I've got here. Okay. And then the batting goes up top. And, and she writes their names on them so she knows who's going to what. And yeah. she even wrote on custom on the ones where she's got to do custom on the bat. Yeah. So she don't, when you're pulling that part out, it's visible, you don't forget. Yeah. So that's cool. I like this. And I this is why I'm here. Because I had a feeling that she had very good storage ideas. And everything I've seen in here, I wouldn't change a thing if I had the space well, for it. This, I will take a, a little credit for it. I'm going to date myself. I went to Ferguson Junior High School mm -hmm. over on January Wabash. Mm -hmm. And the home economic classroom, they had this magical cabinet doors. Mm -hmm. And every girl had their own pull-out bin for the Oh, wow. Supplies. Okay, so this... So this is coming out of what was then home economics. It's now facts. But that's how we did it. And it you can keep things... This is beautiful. This isolated. I'm about to go home and pull that room apart that's got three. And I'm not using the total Hi. wall. Even It's going to go over a window. But I'm not looking out the window anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to cover the window... <laughs> yeah, and go up with these because this makes sense to me. Oh, I can see a see. trip to Ikea and that works So I just wanted to show that she's got another bookcase here And and she is, stores what here? This is my guild batting program. Okay um, These are my quilts to finish. Okay. They're the tops are pieced Bags for quilts, batting scraps, okay, um, stuff for a service organization at the bottom that I belong to, okay, that I took over as very nice region of my local chapter. So that's where a lot of my time's going lately. Very nice file cabinets, her office, <laughs> and <laughs> how geeky I am. That's genealogy, <laughs> that's genealogy. <laughs> Packing for a guild uh, retreat in a okay. couple of weeks. So what machine's in here? Uh, Bernina 930. Okay, because they're going to ask me. Yeah, I, <laughs> okay. I, having worked in sewing machine dealerships, mm -hmm. when you go on a retreat, unless you're going to someplace that's specially set up, uh -huh. or going to a hotel mm -hmm. ballroom, you don't know what the power is. Okay. And I'm funny about computerized machines and power. Mm -hmm. So there's one technique. You going to the state quilt? We're going Gil. to, no, this is St. Louis Modern Quilt Guild. Okay. Show me. It's a okay. ballroom out in okay. um, Maryville. Because that's coming up either September or October. I thought I was going to go, but I'm not yeah. going to have time. And technically that does have a board in it, but it's hmm. replaceable. I think just about every machine has some kind of computer board, that's except the, for the $200 ones, you know. That's the first Bernina that had a board in it. Hmm. And I, I, I know my tech well on that one, so I can... All right, guys. This is her on. stash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let me... It's a closet. This is the, actually this whole room where the customer quilts are is her bedroom that's down here. But I wanted to show you, again, she's so organized. I'll, I'd say 95% of her fabric is in some containers. And she's got the lids to keep dust off, and then she has a window here with the shade to keep the sun off as well. But I just wanted to show you this. One, two, three, four, five shelves plus the floor of uh, things. And I'm sure if we start pulling this out and was placing it straight on the shelves, it'll look like more. But I'm almost thinking that because it's in the containers, it's containing it so you and don't have to worry about... right. And she's got everything labeled, too. So here... I raised three teenage boys. There was very little in my life I was in control of. This I so, could control. Very nice. So I just wanted to show you all this as well. She, would, she didn't think we were coming back here. She said it wasn't <laughs> organized. This is organized for me. I have organized chaos. Just don't move it. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on for a second. So we're having a squirrel moment, apparently. <laughs> Before sewing machines. <laughs> Let me see. It's a sewing table. Oh, wow. 
whether that's bone or ivory, I don't know. But this is the drawer that's fun. Wow. And pin cushion turns over. Silk. It's silk. Yeah, okay, and then powers. what was this? This is before spools of thread. These are thread winders. You'd wind your, oh. you'd buy your thread and pegs and you'd wind it on there because you were sewing by hand. And if you want to get cool. real tricky, there's a little hidden, a couple of little hidden cubbies. Very nice. So, yeah. Yeah. And to show the age on it. Wow. Look at the bottoms. Look how thick that is. Very nice. It's I'm a shame they didn't put years on stuff I'm thinking when it was first, the first when it was made. Of the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And it went with our wow. old house. It doesn't go with this house. Um, whoops. Oops, that's because that's not. Yep. Got to get it back in there just right. <laughs> so I need to find a home for it. Thank you, Dottie, so much for sharing your sewing space with us. This that, is just that, awesome. That picture found me. I was not looking for it. It's an etching from the late 1800s. <laughs> Did you find it in a good thrift store no, or something? No, actually, it found me. I had somebody approach me. Was I interested in it? It is damaged um, behind the matting. Mm -hmm. If you look real close, there's a little bit of a line right here. Okay. The damage is down here, but it's an etching on parchment. There's a, a hole in the stockings. Mm -hmm. um, I've been known to hand spin. Very nice. And it found me. And what struck me, and I haven't looked at it as closely, this is one of the things that will not find a home, is the iconography in it. Because there's a crucifix. Mm hmm She's wearing a crucifix. There's another crucifix. Hmm. See, that's not as obvious. I, would not, yeah. I wasn't paying attention and to there's that. There's one on the t steeple of a church out the window. I can't find it real quick. But I think at one time I, I counted like seven crosses. In mm. um, so they hid some too. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank You're you so welcome. much. Yeah. This has been a true pleasure. Oh, it's awesome. And I, I, was fun. I knew this was going to be great, but I did not know it was going to be this great. <laughs> So you are very creative, figured out how to use the space, and weren't afraid when you had something one way to change it and put yeah. it another way. Well, it it's actually worked out better. Because it's beautiful. There, I was on a 15 amp circuit with mm -hmm. other things on it, and it was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know there was a dedicated 20 amp circuit. Oh. We moved in, we discovered we had zoned um, heating and air, so I have my own thermostat for down here. Gorgeous. And how long you been here now? We were here four years in... Okay. Four years. We moved in the weekend before the world locked down. So this is gorgeous. So I'm just going to end this portion of the video here so we can just talk naturally. <laughs>